And I guess the thing that I want to really reinforce is just how um, predictable and how patterned and how repetitious music is compared with language. And I think that's why, Derek, when you were little, when words didn't mean a great deal, music filled that gap, as it does with a lot of little children with classic autism. It becomes a sort of language for them. And um, in fact, music has been called the fine art of repetition in sound. Um, and it could have been designed, as I say, with, with the autistic uh, child in mind. It's the perfect, um, the perfect therapy, it's the perfect education, it's the perfect friend for little autistic children. Here is my friend Fred, whom I see every Saturday. Um, I was called to see um, Fred because you can probably see that he's part of his kitchen. And uh, on the kitchen are, somewhat strangely, some flower pots. Now, the flower pots used to be on the patio behind. In fact, 25 of them did. It was rather beautiful plants growing out of them. But one morning, Fred's mum came down and discovered he'd empty them all out and made this big sort of gamelan with the flower pots. Um, and if ever a child's, to me, saying, I want to do music, this is it. Because just listen to what Fred does with his flower pots. I should explain a bit of context there. Once Freddie's put his flower pots out, he doesn't like anyone to touch them. So we were trying to get him to do more stuff. But of course, inevitably, when we got the video camera out, Freddie was quite mellow and he didn't really mind. Anyhow, <laughs> but in that tiny section, you can see something extraordinary happening. Most children don't go around flicking flower pots, but Freddie did. And so what does, what, why? Of course, his parents want to know, why is he doing that? The way the brain is wiring itself up is different, and that has lots and lots of different consequences for the way the children think. These are two of the deficits that Simon mentioned. One is problems with processing language, and another is, like Fred, a tendency to hear everyday sounds perceptually rather than functionally. In other words, autistic children are interested in the qualities of things rather than what the objects might do for them. And you could see that with Fred. He wasn't remotely interested in what the flower pots might do for him as plant containers, but he was very interested in their perceptual qualities. To say that um, young autistic children tend to focus more on the melodic contour of speech than the meaning of speech. Um, I'm sure Simon will tell me if I got this wrong, but there, I think there's a, a study when, with four-year-olds, uh, a, a neurotypical group and an autistic group, and the, both groups were subjected to people talking in quite a sort of melodic way. And guess what? The neurotypicals couldn't remember the, the shape of what was said, the melodic contour, but they rem remembered the meaning of the words. And the autistic group remembered the shape of the melody of the, the way we speak up and down, but couldn't remember the meaning of the words. Clearly, they were attending to something <coughs> different. And for some children who don't speak at all, music can assume an even greater importance because it became become a fully-fledged proxy language. It can be the, the way that children communicate. So I'd like to introduce you to Romy. So I met Romy when she was about seven, and it was tricky working with Romy. If, if you tried to play a piece you already knew, she, she'd break down in tears and have a tantrum because it was already emotionally tagged. And putting the piece in a different context was more than she could bear. That was familiar music. If I'd played unfamiliar music, she would have a tantrum because it was unfamiliar. So there's this little challenge that you get of saying, her dad was saying, and so what are you going to do? I said, well, let's just get this clear. I can't play any piece she knows because she doesn't like it. I can't play any piece she doesn't know because she doesn't like it. In the end, we sort of, after six months, um, we found that Fear Elise was something that she would tolerate. It was on one of her early keyboards, and she, she kind of got used to me playing it. Now, the thing was that dad tried to buy her a, a bigger, better keyboard, that had the middle section of Fear Elise in it. And that was, I mean, Romy smashed the keyboard. She would not have this difference, this change that Simon was mentioning. So I thought being a sort of caring, sharing music teacher,
teacher, what happens if I play the middle section? Romy's got to communicate to me that she doesn't want me to, to do it. So here's what happened. Here we go. This is very good for Romy. It's about 10 seconds left. She's listening to the music with her tongue, as you can see. Here's the dread middle section. Watch her hand come out. It's going, that means shut up, shut up, shut up. But I'm ignoring it. So she has to take affirmative action and she goes... <laughs> See that for Romy, music is really a proxy language. She can, she can exert control, the one area in her life where she can control another human being, and in an appropriate way. She can have a, a real conversation. Just to end with, just to put the whole thing together, why don't we get Derek to play us something, and then you can <coughs> interact with Okay. Derek, what about playing um, Tiger Rack? Can do Tiger Rack! Now, this is an arrangement by a guy called Art Tatum, who was a great Tatum. Uh, jazz pianist. And Art Tatum was blind and um, a bit batty, I think, by all accounts. I mean, he, would, um, he didn't speak really much at all. And when he heard several, you know, a couple of pianos playing at the same time, he just didn't realise. He just tried to play all the notes at once, <laughs> like someone I know. <laughs> so you can hear Art Tatum's music sounds rather like two. Four hands all going at the same time. And Derek's one of the few people I know who can play it by ear. It's an incredible achievement. So here's Tiger Ray, a la Art Tatum, Tatum. a la Derek Paracini. Okay, Alan. Okay. <laughs>